Hey, good afternoon, Keepers of the Cash. Gary B, the casual comic guy here. And today we are going to do a review of the miniseries Stranger Things Science Camp. Uh, before we get to season four, which is on the way and inevitably coming down the road, which we're all looking forward to, this series takes place between seasons two and seasons three. At the beginning of season three, we see Dustin returned from his science camp. Uh, he has a new romance, which nobody believes, in the name of Susie. And this little four-parter fills in that blank. Uh, it tells how he met Susie. It tells you the circumstances under how they bonded and what happened at science camp. And it sets up like a classic 80s movie. You would expect no less. So we got Jody Hauser writing and Edgar Salazar with the art. Uh, the writing, the writing's good. Uh, if you're not a Stranger Things fan or know anything about Stranger Things, this is going to be a miss for you. If you love Stranger Things and you're embedded in the lore, you're going to like this. So, we see Dustin arriving at camp, and Dustin sees what he, he sees, you know. He's leaving, leaving his regular life behind and going to go do something he loves. He he's a, loves science, he loves learning, and he immediately runs into some bullies picking on a kid there and sticks up for the kid and gets himself through his mouth and running it too much even though he puts the bullies in their place and they're science bullies so they're kids that didn't feel powerful at home trying to feel powerful at camp so you got that kind of parallel running uh, kids who are victims victimizing other kids to try to feel like uh, like they have the power and it's not ideal and it delves more into what Stranger Things does where it Kids just trying to fit in, trying to find where they belong and what they're doing. And Dustin, through his adventures with his friends back home, has a more clear idea of where he's going and a lot more confidence than the other kids there do. So he sticks up for the kid and he opens his mouth and says he's going to run a D&D &D game. Uh, the two that are bullies don't believe him, so he starts calculating it out to do it. Um, in the midst of all this, the counselors are betting on what kids are going to get in a fist fight, and they're betting who buys the first beers. So, basic counselors who are there just to get a paycheck, but don't really care about the kids. There is uh, one or two that do, but for the most part, you know, they're there because their parents want them to work, and they don't really want to work, but they can't go home and tell their parents that, so they're stuck in a situation that they don't like either. And... All of a sudden, there's a problem. Uh, someone shows up in an Einstein mask, and you get that glimpse in the first cover here. They're in a cloak, and they have a screwdriver, and one of the counselors gets threatened and then is missing. Uh, there's a note left behind. Did the counselor go home? Did the counselor get murdered? You don't know. In the midst of Dustin trying to stick up and befriend these kids who need it and trying to oppose the kids who are trying to be the new bullies he gets entangled in it uh, through his new and developing relationship with Susie who you'll remember from season three in the last episode and this this story kind of leads up to that it's kind of uh, cute so you see Susie not having a lot of confidence and she goes and talks to a counselor about meeting up with Dustin and telling her how she feels because to her Dustin is this guy with a lot of confidence and a natural born leader something that Dustin didn't really feel at home but he was getting through Steve and other people starting to develop his own personality his own sense of worth and just not being afraid to stick up and say stick up for himself and stick up for others and say what he wants to say and that's starting to rub off on her, and she's smart, of course. She likes him. Um, there's some misunderstandings always, right? First love, it's rough. And a second counselor gets attacked. Another counselor is missing. 
and I'm and I'm not going to delve much into it. Right now, you have the premise of someone in an Einstein mask with a cloak and a screwdriver threatening and or killing camp counselors. Mm -hmm. So it's all very reminiscent of a Friday the 13th movie from the 80s, right? And it's on purpose. And Dustin and Susie get embroiled in it, and they bring the other science camp kids into the mystery with them, and they're going to figure out what's going on. Who's threatening the students? I mean, the counselors. Who's threatening the camp? Because the camp is important to them. None of them want to go back home for the summer. They're here because they want to be here. And they feel like they're among their, their own people here. Where they fit in and they don't have to struggle every day to prove their worth or who they are. Or just be picked on, right? So this is a place of comfort for them. Comfort and learning. And they don't want to see that go anywhere. So... Dustin, no stranger to adventure, and Susie, who is just a very uh, go-getter girl, form up with the other kids, and they set out to catch the killer. And that's where I'm going to leave it. How does it turn out? You, I mean, you've seen season three. You know Dustin makes it. They're not going to kill him off in a comic. You know Susie makes it. Well, what's the mystery? How do they figure it out? And what happens? And what solidifies their relationship together? So overall, it's a very quick read. Um, it's more about Dustin and Susie coming together and forming their bond and setting up those relationships in Dustin's state of mind for when he's in season three. And as a tie into season three, it's a fun little read. As a standalone, I'd probably give it a C. As a tie-in, I'd give it a B. So if you're hooked on the Stranger Things lore and you're really enjoying Stranger Things and you watched all three seasons and you watched them again and you're invested in the characters and Dustin's one of your favorites, you're going to like it. It's fun. It doesn't take a big commitment to read. It's four quick issues. And they, they write Dustin ably. So... Um, it's, it feels like Dustin, it always feels like Dustin, and some of the, some of the dialogue they give him is really good, and you could just see the actor spewing it out on an episode. So, like I said, as a tie-in, a B. Standalone, we'll give it a C, but if you're a Stranger Things fan, especially a Dustin fan, then I would encourage you to get this four issue miniseries. If you're a casual Stranger Things fan... You're fine without it. You don't really need it. Um, but that's it, guys. Just a straight, quick review, hopefully non-spoilers for you guys, of Stranger Things Science Camp. And, like I said, just a great little series uh, if, you're, if you're into the lore. All right? And if you guys like this, let me know. And when Stranger Things Dungeons & Dragons finishes up, I will do a review of that. But that's it for now, guys. So hopefully you like this quick little review. And until next time, keep it casual.